All right, welcome back to the Ways to Flourish podcast, where we discuss how to flourish through our challenges and elevate the voices across the William & Mary campus. Continuing through our self-care episodes today, we have wellness professionals and certified yoga therapist, Patty DeBlas and Cindy Crace. We're going to be answering the question, which yoga class is right for me? Patty has specialty training in yoga for seniors from Duke Integrative Medicine, Yin Yoga, PTSD, Traumatic Stress, and Therapeutic Yoga. And both of our guests are ERYT 500 and Certified Yoga Therapist. So why don't we start right at the top and explain how did you guys get started with yoga and what is an ERYT? So I'll I'll go first. Um, My name is Cindy Crace and um, Lindsay and Colin, thank you so much for inviting Patty and I. Uh, This is probably one of the most common questions we get asked is what, what type of yoga class should I step into? But first, I started with yoga and, and my college years. Uh, I played a collegiate sport and I found yoga was just so all encompassing from my mind, body, and spirit that I just really enjoyed it and pursued it later. And I got my um, Yoga 200 RYT, and I'll explain a little bit of that later. But then I went on and got my 500 and became a yoga therapist. At the time, my mother-in-law was suffering from chronic pain, and so I wanted to try to help her, and that's why I became a yoga therapist. You can get a yoga training of 20 hours, and most colleges, that's what they have. But here at William & Mary, we require our yoga instructors to have a 200 yoga teaching program from Yoga Alliance. So it's a registered yoga teacher. And both Patty and I are an E500, and that's the highest you can go through Yoga Alliance. And that's kind of where I come from with my therapeutic background. And Patty, how about you? So my journey is a little similar. I came into yoga, oh, probably in my early 20s when I was having some health issues and really became a practitioner, always enjoying it. And as my youngest daughter became a young adult, she wanted to become a yoga teacher. And she asked me to just kind of come along on that journey with her. I never anticipated that I would enjoy the teaching aspect and the therapeutic aspect on the other end as much. But needless to say, it was definitely the right path for me. And here I am. And here you are. And we're so glad to have you both here. And I was fortunate enough to go through the training program the first year that Cindy brought that to campus. And so happy that it's grown and blossomed. And Patty is now a part of that as well. And just to reiterate to our listeners out there, like qualifying as a yoga instructor with Yoga Alliance as you work through that program, I mean, that's something that you have to maintain. And, uh, you know, a broad variety of education components. Because a lot of times when we think about yoga, Of course, we're thinking about the asana, the postures, but it's really a multifaceted practice. Yes, it is, Lindsay, that's for sure. And it's really, it's rewarding, I think, for all of us within wellness to see the dedication of our students that really step into the teacher training program, because it is a commitment. They're they're doing that 200 hours within their school year. So it's it's a commitment for them. Yeah. And I was looking at our our current schedule that we have right now. And once those students go through that training program, they, of course, then are the ones that are providing these classes along with both of you and our other wellness professionals. I looked today, we have 11 different types of yoga classes on our current schedule for the spring from vinyasa, breath practice, wake up, yin and meditation, yoga to restore conditioning. I mean, wow. So... Can we talk a little bit about how these classes are different? Like what is the deciding factor between like a vinyasa class, yoga conditioning, and how can we decide what's right for us? Yeah, Patty, why don't you take that first starting with uh, probably one of the best classes to start, step into the first class. If this is your first time and first experience with a yoga class is a breath class. Yep. So this is our, our actually our newest edition um, this semester to our lineup. You know, breath is a big conversation right now. People are writing books about it. And it's something that the ancient yogis uh, were practicing for thousands of years. And it is an integral part of our yoga practices. So this class, which is a 15-minute exploration 
Um, we look at different types of breath practices and how we can utilize them within our day. So we're currently working on more practices that are soothing to the nervous system during, especially this time of the pandemic when all of our cortisol levels are really high, our anxiety is high. We know that the breath can help us to um, find that place of peace and calm just within our every day. So from there, since breath is such an integral part of all of our classes, you'll, you'll notice that there is in all of our classes some type of a breath practice. Um, when Cindy and I have kind of designed the structure of the classes, we're of the belief there are really two very important components, um, especially in our community. And it's the beginning of class with our breath and at the end of class when we come into our relaxation pose. So the next class maybe we should um, talk about is probably our most popular class, wouldn't you say, Cindy, or just straight yoga class? Yeah, the straight yoga class. And the reason Patty and I kind of developed this class is it's a set sequence class. It's the first class our yoga teachers are taught because it takes out the kind of guesswork of sequencing because sequencing is a, is a big experiential thing that you step into. But the set sequence classes are very therapeutic as a student the first time stepping into because there's set sequence that every teacher teaches the exact same. It allows that really mind, body, and spirit to happen because you start tuning in to the balancing postures. They're static poses. And when we say static poses, we mean poses that you're balancing that you're using your body weight and you have all different kinds of levels from keeping both feet on the ground. You can lift one. So we give you several different options, but it's always the same exact sequence. So it allows you to kind of get into this meditative state that you can let go of the stress of what's outside of your yoga class, what's outside of your mat, and just really focus on the postures. And as Lindsay talked about, we call postures in yoga asanas. So it gives you that opportunity to really experience them. And it also gives you the opportunity, since you're constantly doing the same poses, you really see real quickly becoming better at them. So it gives you that wonderful opportunity to see improvement. It's wonderful for stress and anxiety because you can step into the space knowing what you're going to expect after the first class because it's always going to be the same. So it's really a nice class to step into for your first experience with a yoga class. And why is that sequencing important, Patty? I mean, I'm, I know I've got some favorite poses out there. You know, why shouldn't I just pop into Pigeon, my all-time favorite? Well, in this class, we have designed it to open up the body, all of the channels in the body, and just like everything in life, it's a, it's a chance to explore the differences between the right side and the left side, the front side and the back side, the upper part of your body, the lower part of your body. And it's in that space of curiosity. It's in these awarenesses that we begin to have that we're able to flourish um, because if we know that, you know what, I took a misstep today. And so I need to be a little more careful of that space. That's how we honor our, well, not only our body, but our mind and our spirit in order to stay healthy and to not injure ourselves. So this class is definitely the spot where we encourage most people to stop in first. And it's also a class we encourage if you're feeling that sense of anxiety or stress, this is a great place to just let go um, for just 45 minutes. That's great. And what about a yin class? What would that experience be like? Yin is a really mindful practice. The difference in our yin classes, we're going a little deeper into connective tissue and joint capsules in our yin classes. So there's an additional component of mindfulness that needs to happen in that space. It is also another class that we really need to have that parasympathetic nervous system turned on 
in order for the body to find that sense of peace and calm in order to get into that space. So in other words, we need to let them find the time to let the muscles relax so that we can open up the connective tissue. So it requires a little bit more patience. We don't do as much movement because we hold the poses for a longer period of time. So it's more of a intermediate place to step in. Some confusion here is people will say, if they were looking into a room and seeing us practicing, they would think, oh, well, they're not really doing that much, but the work is internal. It's again, connecting the breath, relaxing the muscle and letting the body open up as it needs to. And when you say opening up and, and, you know, releasing that deeper connective tissue, is this the same as stretching or what, what's the difference? Hmm. That's a good question, Lindsay. It's similar to stretching, but it's a little deeper than stretching. So because we're going deeper, we not only need to come into the pose very carefully, we need to come out of the pose just as carefully. So different than the dynamic stretching that you might be doing in the gym before you weight lift, where you know you're doing some work to open up, but it's it's movement, maybe quicker movement. It's kind of in the stillness of this practice that the magic happens. I always like that sense of creating space in the body. That it's always exactly resonates what you're doing really well with me. And then yoga conditioning. So are we leveling up when we move into our yoga conditioning class or? It's a, yeah, it's really a nice blend of dynamic strength training and functional mobility. So kind of having that building of strength, but also incorporating the whole yogic philosophy of balancing and that mobility that we can find within our body. So it's just increasing what you can do, but it's also in a way of doing it with our body weight. Sometimes we'll use hand weights. Sometimes we'll use books or anything that's close to us, even cans of food. Sometimes we'll even pick those up since most of us are doing things at home. But it's combining that strength training along with the functionality of yoga. And again, this class would kind of fall into maybe you're doing the yoga class and you're just finding, oh, you know what, maybe my core strength is just not that, like when we go into that plank, oh my gosh, that is work for me. You know, one of the things that we'll, we'll pretty much always do in a yoga conditioning class is work on that core strength because that's really where our movement comes from. And that's how the movement is, as Cindy said, functional. And it's also, it's more of a high intensity class compared to the yoga class or a yin class. So if someone's had a kind of a, maybe a frustrating day or want to burn off some energy, it's a nice class to step into. So when I'm looking at the schedule and I really want to start to, you know, intentionally build upon that sense of harmony in my daily life, I have a great sense of options of, okay, if I'm feeling a bit distraught, emotionally heavy right now, there's a type of class that might suit me better than say, you know, a yoga conditioning. So like in, in that example, where would I be going? The yoga class, the vinyasa class, the breathwork class? Yes. <laughs> so the breath class is always a great place for that. Wednesday is kind of our wellness Wednesday with some pairing of our classes. So we have our yoga for stress management with some meditation classes within there also. And the beauty is if you had the time and you needed to, you could string a few together. So when we have the class yoga for stress management, we dedicate a little bit more time than in our traditional yoga classes for that breath work because that's the key. Our movement in that class is going to be very mindful. It's going to connect you back in so that you are able to kind of take that time in class and maybe just get that little evaluation that you need in that space of curiosity. You know, and just going, oh, all right, well, this is what's going on. Yeah, and then our vinyasa flow classes, 
they're one breath, one movement. So it's a string of poses that you move from one pose to get to another. So it's kind of a beautiful dance of the asanas and it's where sun salutations come in. And, and so it's a nice way if you want to keep moving. It also is more of a high energy yoga practice. But like I said, it's, it's something if you're craving movement, the vinyasa flow would be a nice class to step into because it does take one breath to one movement. And we just kind of thread these asanas together. And so then while we're always focusing in an experience in any of the yoga classes, really building that sense of the mind and the body connection, but on the opposite end of that spectrum, if I am looking to, I guess, level up my practice a bit, the other end of that spectrum is going to be the conditioning class. Yeah, the conditioning class and the vinyasa flow, Mm -hmm. because the vinyasa flow and our teachers do a wonderful job of sequencing the class, either to a peak pose, like you had mentioned pigeons, one of your favorite poses, that would be a a vinyasa flow class. They would open up the chain of muscles in order to set you up for success. And that's your vinyasa flow. And your yoga conditioning would build up a little bit more if you felt like you needed the core in order to get into that pigeon, that would be stepping into yoga conditioning. Yeah, that's wonderful. And you guys have a yoga teacher training coming up pretty soon in our... Some applications are open right now. Yes, but can we talk about our favorite morning class first? Our wake up yoga. Yes. Tell me about that. This class is back on the schedule three times for this semester. This class we're having Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning is a great way to start your day. So we're setting you up for success within your day. You're going to see some sun salutation practice in there, building some strength. You're going to see some mindful practices of breath, maybe a little bit of quiet for meditation. Um, Just a great way to tune in um, for the morning. And again, this class is accessible to everyone. Cindy and I are teaching that class this semester, and we're allowing for Lots of accessibility in that class. So you'll get lots of modifications. Every day is different for all of us. Monday sometimes is way different than how you feel on Friday. So we're taking that into account when we're... Yeah, um, instead of reaching for that caffeine, um, if you really want to wake yourself up in the right way, step into a wake-up yoga class. It's a nice way to start your day off. And this semester, these classes are virtual or in-person? They're all kind of a mix, but the wake-up yoga is virtual. So that's nice. You can just roll out of bed and turn on your computer and and start movement. Convenient. So convenient. All right. So any other classes that we want to touch on? No, I think that's it. I think we hit everything. And I think just, you know, as, as a wellness professional, Cindy and I take real careful consideration when we're designing and sculpting classes to always make sure we're joining in the eight dimensions of wellness. So know that when you're stepping in, we're trying to give you a full composite of wellness within your whatever amount of time you give us, 45 or 60 minutes. And in all the classes, you get all the wonderful benefits from yoga. I mean, you can lower your blood pressure. You can increase your lung capacity from the breath work. And it's, it's a nice stress reducer. It even shows the cortisol levels are, are being reduced by yoga. So there's so many wonderful benefits that, that any of these classes that you step into. And also wanted to mention that we have yoga Pilates from Emma, who also has um, that combined class. So that's beautiful combining yoga with Pilates. So we do have that class available too. I really like the opportunity of the virtual classes. If you've never stepped foot in the studio or had that experience, just being able to have that level of comfort, experiencing that from your home, uh, that's just been a really nice thing to watch. So we talked about our yoga school uh, training that's coming up for the 21-22 academic year. Where can we learn more about that? You can go to William & Mary EDU and search Shanti Giridasana, and that's S-H-A-N-T-I-G-A-R-U-D-A-S-A-N-A. Yeah, and it's a Yoga Alliance accredited school. We give out scholarships to students, faculty, and staff. We're taking applications now. If you're interested in becoming a yoga instructor, it's a wonderful opportunity to get through the college. 
All right, Patty and Cindy, thank you so much for spending your time with us today on our podcast. We really appreciate your your insight, your wisdom, and, and the gifts that you share with our campus. Thank you so much for having us. Namaste. Namaste. And you can register for our yoga classes through the William & Mary Wellness app and find the yoga teacher training program by searching Shanti on williamandmary.edu. Join us next time for a Q&A session. You can submit your questions by DMing us on Instagram or email wellness at wm.edu. And as always, thank you to United Healthcare for sponsoring our podcast. This episode was produced by Lindsay Heck, Brittany Emmons, Eric Garrison, and Colin Cross. <laughs>